Whoa! Welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Air Rushing, and we are back for the Dragster Project. And you might be taking a close look at me and saying, something ain't right here. There's way more facial hair on you than is on the guy in the video, which is still you. Alright, we're time traveling today, guys. <laughs> um, this video was recorded a couple months back, but we were waiting for the hood scoop so that I could wrap that up for the entire project and then get the series rolling. So, just a quick recap. We did start off with just masking it out and spraying the dragster white. Today we're going to get back on into it and we're going to start with the grill. Which is a lot of masking, I'm not going to lie. And the fins. Again, a lot of masking, not going to lie. <laughs> so we're going to be masking today, a bit of spraying. Um, always some helpful tips along the way. So, check it out as we get into this one today, or yesterday, month ago, a while back. <laughs> Time travel. Uh, Alright. Day two. See, what did I tell you? Time travel. Yep, traveling back to a younger me. Ah, those were the days. Let's see what this looks like, white. Yes, let's. <laughs> the Autoborn white has been laid on there, nice and bright, and ready as a canvas for us to come in and start laying in some artwork. And the first thing we're going to tackle is uh, masking out, mapping out the Chevy bow tie. Now, I photocopied, I actually have an original one of these, so I just photocopied that and cut it out. And made sure it was the size I needed, measured it obviously to get it dead center, and then going in with my gray mixture, blue, purple, brown, and just lightly dusting that in, ever so lightly, just so I know where it is. Then with my eighth inch pinstripe tape, I am starting to map out the center bar that goes on this grill, and we're gonna do this to save it and keep it nice and bright white while we tackle the interior of this grill. And it's a process, guys. It's always a process when you start having to get hard edges against hard edges with paint. And the best way I can do it, at least i found, for the best edges is to mask and save. Now I'm quickly drawing in the one end of the bar and doing a tracing transfer to the other side. Brand new X-Acto blade, cha-ching, and ever so carefully cut that out. You don't want to cut too deep, risking cutting through the white and having peeling problems. And you actually see me run that blade a couple times because I'm cutting so light and then masking out the outline. And we are ready for this grill, which is more masking. For this one, we're using the quarter inch pinstripe tape and the double wide masking tape. And this is just a quick way to do a repetitive pattern without having to go back and grab that measuring tape over and over. This masking tape gives me the width. And this is where I start to find out that this fiberglass body isn't exactly symmetrical. There are some subtle differences, so I had to make a little bit of an extension onto the end of that chrome bar, just so that everything lined up. And then for this one, I'm just using the quarter inch. So laying down one piece of quarter inch, laying down another for the width, and then another for the masking, peeling up the width part, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Then a quick skirting of some masking paper gets us ready for paint. Now to keep things symmetrical, I am counting the bars for these little fog lights I've decided to hide in behind the grill. Um, you can paint this area black if you wanted to, but I want to have some depth. 
And not just depth, because that could be easily achieved with what I'm doing right here. Allowing that black to fade into a background. I'm going to go in and do some blue to that bottom edge so it actually looks like there's blue paint fading into the background there. But I want to get some eye candy in this area as well. I think it's these added touches, these add little details that just give to more of a realistic flavor in the end. And again, having something hidden behind the grill just adds another layer of dimension to the paint. So I'm gonna paint a couple little indiscriminate things in the background here, nothing too solid. I'm gonna have some fun with it. Fairly haphazard, not gonna waste a lot of time. You see me do a drop shadow for that center bar. Again, it's these things that just really help to make it jump out and make it look like one thing is above the other, above the other, above the other. The layers of dimension. Dimension? Dementia. The demented dimensions. And here you see me going in with some blue, as I was telling you about earlier, just to make it look like that's fading into the background. Just so you're seeing a bottom edge of the body of that car. And that's a little light, so I'm going to go in and just knock it back a little bit with my blue-purple-brown mixture. So what you saw me do at the beginning of this was all black. Just straight black, just to blast it in real quick. And now that I've got everything kind of mapped out, now is where I start using my blue-purple-brown mixture. This is about five drops of my sepia brown, one drop of my rowny blue, and one drop of my deep purple. Thereabouts. But here we're going back in with some white to bring back the highlights and the reflection lines to really make these little fog lights shimmer and shine from in behind. And even though it's just a couple of dots and lines, I'm making sure to take my time. <laughs> Uh, making sure it all rhymes. Build up slowly. Not a race. It's more like a march. The march of dimes, and we're feeling fine. Alright, that's enough of that. And we're just gonna go back in and do a bit of a wash tone. Just build up those last little bit of highlights just so the entire surface has a bit of a reflective quality. Some reflection lines over top and what we do to one side we do to the other and back and forth here we are building some highlight edges to that rad I was talking about earlier and some hoses coming through again not spending a whole chunk of my day doing this just building up something so it looks like there is something in the darkness this will all eventually be the background, and here, here I am double brushing it. <laughs> I was ambidextrous as a kid and could easily write with both hands. Um, <laughs> here I'm showing off just a little bit, or just trying to get it done. Double the guns, twice as much fun. <laughs> I thought we said that was the end of that. And here you guys can get a little bit of a closer look as to what I've been trying to achieve. The hint of a radiator, some internal engine parts, and those fog lights. And the fun task of peeling all those lines that we laid down. Now I went in and sprayed some dark tones and some highlights. Unfortunately, I didn't record that, so we're not going to see that. But, uh... When we get onto the tail fin later on in this video, it's very similar. Picking your hot spots where you want your highlights to be a little brighter and your cool spots where you want your shadows and it to be a little darker. Then with a transparent white, saving that bottom shadow edge, I am going in and just giving a bit of a 3D corner to every single... <laughs> One of these. Yeah, I'm not going to get you guys to watch the entire process. Um, but it did happen. And uh, now we're going to peel this grill and get it ready for chrome. And that's just a teaser. Because we're going to tackle the chrome in the next video. 
back to masking and as you can see this time I was using your typical masking tape and my quarter inch pinstripe tape to map out the pattern and now for this I actually doubled up on my masking tape bringing the second layer of masking tape down about a sixteenth of an inch leaving the rest exposed and this way I can actually peel it back when I'm done and this will give me another three-dimensional edge. It's a lot of masking. It's a lot of masking. And referring back to my reference of how the reflections bounce off of the chrome sections of these actual fins. And that's all it is, guys. I'm just picking some sort of vibration lines where you can see it starts a little smaller, almost like a ripple in a wave, and then gets a little bigger and a little more spaced out the further we get away from our central point, working with an upside-down triangle here as the fin is kind of laid out as such. I'm using that bottom edge as my focal point and this is all make-believe guys <laughs> there is no real right or wrong but this is how I'm doing it for this project I hope you can translate it to what you do but here's now where you can see that masking and saving that top little bit gives us a nice 3d top edge and we can't leave that white so I'm gonna give the whole thing just a bit of a dusting, just a little bit of a wash tone. And this is again with my blue purple brown mixture. Now I wanted this to be more on the cool end of the spectrum, so I did use a little bit more blue. So this would be five drops brown, one drop purple, and two drops blue, just to get a little bit more on the cooler end of the spectrum. All right, guys, so this is mass, so we can start tackling some drop shadows on the fins, on the little raised bevels. Yup, masked it all over again, and this time you may be able to see I masked everything but the bottom 16th inch of that beveled shape that we're trying to create, so this will give me twofold. This will give me a darker edge to that bevel, and this will also give me that little bit of a drop shadow fade below it. So with this paint, I am only trying to be on the bottom edge of that masking tape, not trying to reach the top edge of the masking tape below it, allowing that to fade to give me a nice little drop shadow effect. I hope that's clear. Feel free to ask me any questions. You know, we can probably tackle some drop shadow videos in the beginner series if you guys are having troubles with these but it's just another little effect that helps to make it look like it's popping off of the surface when in reality it's just a flat surface flat as flat can be not when I'm done with it <laughs> and uh, working in sections not trying to tackle these big long lines one at a time. No, I'm just working in sections, keeping myself comfortable, moving my chair <laughs> as I go, rather than moving it and coming back, moving it and coming back. Little time saver. And uh, keep in mind, <laughs> I got to do this on the other side as well. So time is definitely of the essence and I uh, can't be wasting a whole heck of a lot of it. That's why you see me peeling in unison rather than peeling one piece of tape. I do multiple. Just another way to save some time. Swish, nothing but net. <laughs> and now we gotta give some color to these fin sections, which on the original car would have been just white paint. However, that white paint would have reacted and interacted with the chrome 3D beveled parallel accents, for lack of a better description. <laughs> so you see me going in and again giving the whole thing a bit of a wash tone. Now I'm not too concerned about the little bit of a brown going over top of the blue that we did for the chrome 3D beveled thingamajigs. I'm more concerned that the entire thing has some varying tones and those tones are consistent 
throughout. And that's how I do, guys. Or at least that's how I done did it here. And I think that's where we're going to wrap up this one. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. And until next time, where we tackle some chrome, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. And if you'd like to grab yourself an official Bloodshot uniform, head on over to the Spreadshirt page and support the cause. And don't forget, guys, we've got the Airbrushing for Beginners series, the Airbrushing Hacks series, and plenty of tutorials. Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.